That was before I got sick. Ed Heavener used to work as a truck driver for a living. I've been in and around the trucking industry since I was 16. And frequently went camping with his wife, Michelle. There's where we went to Bear Creek Lake, but we didn't stay in the cabins. But on March 14th of 2022. I was doing a route up in Harrisonburg, all up in that area. And I loaded my truck to leave and got on the road and I called my dispatcher. I said, man, I'm just not feeling right. Ed didn't realize it at the time, but he was having a heart attack. It has changed everything about him. He had open heart surgery and now lives attached to an oxygen machine 24 hours a day. That's when you got hitched to your oxygen machine. This is my change. I mean, I can't, I can't go anywhere without it. The fight for his life and his recovery have not been easy, but Ed says another fight nearly broke him. At times, this had me so messed up. I was ready to commit suicide. I will not hide that fact. Ed has not been able to work since his heart attack and desperately needed income. So he filed with the Social Security Administration for disability on December 27th of 2022. Month after month, he would call from his Henrico home to get a status update. And they gave me the song in this, due to a staffing shortage, we are unable to process your claim. Finally, after 10 months of waiting for a decision, the Social Security Administration denied his claim. When you came in, I didn't believe you. So there, I said, there's a mistake. There is a technical thing that we're just going to get wrapped up for you very quickly because there's no way that they denied you when you're on 24-hour oxygen. Not at 58 with past work as a truck driver, they didn't. Ed's attorney, Horace Hunter, helped Ed file an appeal. This is Social Security disability. This isn't a handout. When you pay into the system, every time they take something out of your check, Melissa, part of that is in the event you become disabled. That's your insurance. But again, another long wait for a decision. I called so many times that people knew me when I answered, when they answered the phone. And Hunter says the more he dug into the case, the more mistakes he found on the part of the Social Security Administration. They were missing entire segments of his medical record and were not really all that enthusiastic about getting it. It was just surprising how long it took and what we had to go through and the number of mistakes that were made at the local office. Finally, in mid-May of this year, Ed and Michelle were at the end of their rope. Well, we had already gotten an, a pay or quit notice from our landlord as well. You know, we were about to get thrown out. Desperate, the couple emailed CBS 6 for help. I contacted the SSA on behalf of Ed to ask about the delay in processing his appeal and to try to learn more about why he had been denied in the first place. Finally, I got a call shortly after you sent your several emails. Within a week, I had my money. Within a week of you sending these emails, I had my money. One and a half years after he first applied, Ed got his money. And it was a tremendous release to open up that email and look and see, okay, I'm getting X amount of dollars deposited into my account. Because they knew that with the denial that they had given Heavener based on his medical record, that that's embarrassing. That's a black eye on the Social Security Administration and that's a black eye on the local office and whoever was in charge knew it once they realized that the media had gotten hold of this. Hunter says the amount of time it takes to process an initial disability claim and then an appeal is far too long. Even when everything goes well, Melissa, we're telling people now that it's eight to 10 months for an initial application to be decided. Can you imagine not having income for eight to 10 months? And that's the initial application, which is oftentimes denied. On its website, the SSA talks about wanting to improve its customer service, but one of the problems it faces is the widening gap between staffing levels and the growing number of customers. Take a look at this graph that illustrates the problem. They say one of their key goals is to lower processing times for disability appeals to 270 days. Hunter says he can empathize with the staffing problems, but in Heavener's case, he says he believes incompetence played a role. You just know how hard it is to get employees anywhere in any industry now. Social Security is no different. And it's such a massive uh, you know, bureaucracy is such a massive agency that you give them a little slack, you know, when we're coming out of COVID, there's a lot going on, but there are some things, gosh, Heavener's case, losing things. Well, thankful to have his money now, Ed is advocating for changes at the SSA because he doesn't want others to go through what he had to.
I know I'm not the only one they're doing this to, and I don't believe something needs to be done about it because it's not fair. If it would not have been for an understanding landlord, we would have been living in a cardboard box underneath a bridge somewhere. We asked a spokesperson with the Social Security Administration why it took so long to resolve Ed's case and if the administration felt like his case was handled properly. The spokesperson did not answer the question, but instead referred us to the SSA's website in response to some more general questions we asked about the amount of time it takes to process disability claims. I'm Melissa Hippolyte for CBS 6.